And you are on the platform. And yes, we are just, Ben is just teeing up. Posey Parker is about to join us. She's rung in. Uh, she is a busy woman. Uh, she is a busy woman. I think she's just uh, launched a political party. And we've got her. I know that we've got her from her. Jeez, it's a much better bloody studio than I've got. She's got there. It's very swank. They've got the overhead thing for the microphone. She's looking good. And we're just going to see if she can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, gosh, I you're with us. I can hear you, yeah. I'm gosh, so sorry. That, that's taken a while. What happened? Why did you stand me up? Uh, I was on um, one of America's uh, largest podcast uh, platforms. and um, You weren't with Joe Rogan, were you? No, not Joe Rogan, no. Oh, come on, tell me then. No, it was Sebastian Gorka. Oh, good Lord. Well, I don't mind being stood up for Sebastian. I'd stand you up for Sebastian Gorka. Probably. <laughs> um, and and uh, no foul, uh, no harm. Hey, uh, Kelly J, firstly, nice to talk to you again. Gosh, I did warn you, I think, when I first interviewed you that New Zealand was a lot weirder than you might have thought. Was I right? Yeah. And by weird, did you mean like uh, authoritarian, left, violent and uh, woman-hating? You might think that. I couldn't possibly, <laughs> possibly comment. Um, Unbelievable. But it was crazy what happened to you, eh? It's absolutely revolting. Um, made so much worse. Like people know my name, but there were there was a, a, a woman aged seventy two who got her eye socket broken um, by the guy punching her in the face. Uh, there were there was another woman had a foot crush. There was a woman eleven weeks pregnant. Another woman had to go into sort of hide with her ten year old daughter. Um, I've watched the footage. I've seen just regular men just try and pull women to the floor. It's, uh, and the police were on the outskirts of the park. And I don't blame a single individual officer that was there because I do believe they helped save my life that day. Yeah. But um, there's something really dodgy, stinks from up high that uh, those officers weren't in their park. Yeah, look, we've... Uh, I asked uh, the National, the opposition police spokesperson today, he says you cannot blame the front line guys, guys but he says... Something's coming down from police headquarters um, to make them make bad decisions. And I'm sorry, I watched your live stream from my home in Wellington, literally horrified at what I was seeing uh, unfold in front of my eyes. And I'm sorry, uh, those officers were standing in the street nearby and your supporters and other people were going to them saying, people are getting crushed there, this is dangerous. Steely faced Missile men didn't do anything. Once you get out onto the street, they surrounded you. I understand they took you away to, to Central, to the police station that day. And look, I'm really interested, Kelly J, and obviously you were traumatised by what happened. You weren't act There wasn't acting, that wasn't drama from your part. What did they tell you that afternoon about the rest of your trip and your safety or, or what? the level of safety they could provide to you uh, if you were to continue and come down to Wellington? Well, I, uh, look, I, when I got in that car uh, in, the, <laughs> in the aftermath, when I was obviously still a little bit shocked, I just said to the security guy, would it be the same? <laughs> would it be the same in Wellington? And he's like, yeah. yeah. And he just said, I can't keep you safe. So it was, I, I'd made that decision already. Mm. Um, but to leave your country... I had two officers guard the door of the room I was in at the police station and it was a need to know basis. So there was a sergeant, I think it was a sergeant, and then the operational commander. Mm. They're the only people that knew where I was. Wow. my route was. And then two other officers escorted me to the airport and then I was at a police station at the airport until it was time for me to go um, and check in, and then those three officers who were so lovely um, stayed with me until the plane actually took off to make sure that I wasn't attacked on the plane wow. in your country. And I went to Dubai on the way home. I have to say, I felt safer in Dubai. God. Look, I, can I tell you something too? The, we had an amazing uh, morning here on the platform on, on the Monday, which we threw over mm. to women. Women got first crack. The number of people who rang and who had been there who had been assaulted and been terrified and the number of people who wanted to say sorry to you from the whole country for what happened to you. I mean, there is a sense of shame 
amongst many New Zealanders yeah. at the way you were treated and also increasingly shame at the way New Zealand women uh, were treated and, and assaulted uh, that yeah. day. Um, boy, it's had some impact. Uh, I note people, you know, the aforementioned Joe Rogan, uh, J.K. Rowling, uh, Jordan Peterson, a whole lot of people have looked at what happened that day and passed some, I think, justified negative judgment on New Zealand. What is the reaction you have had um, back in the UK and to what happened to you? Well, you know, a, a massive outpouring. A lot of women feel genuinely traumatised um, because they watched it real time and I think them, like me, didn't know if I was going to make it out alive. Um, and they could watch the, they could see the violent assaults as they were occurring, uh, probably more than I could. I mean, I just concentrated on one foot in front of the other. And then as the surge came forward and I started falling to the side um, with this amazing woman called Tanya, and we both started falling, I just thought, geez, if, if, I, if I fall, I won't get up. And a, a, a body on the floor is, is not like a human being anymore. It's just like a, a body on the floor and can be kicked and stamped on and... Um, or I'm going to get crushed. So between myself and what I would call a bandstand, which you call something else, the the thing in the middle, um, you know, it was it was just so frightening. I just thought we'd get crushed to death. But I think there is a collective uh, fear for the women of New Zealand from us in the UK and the global community of women. Just really do think, what's the difference between New Zealand and other oppressive regimes that hate women? Really? Yeah, I hear you. Hey, Kelly J, um, would you be happy to take some calls? We'll screen them. I think there are a lot of women and a lot of New Zealanders who want to um, who want to say sorry and want to reach out to you. Have you got time for that? Would you mind? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'll favorite. just say now, if you want to ring in, 0800 33 2283. Um, and if you're some sort of troll or Rainbow Troll, we're going to screen you and you won't get a go. Um, okay, um, so we're open for calls now on 0800 33 uh, Kelly Joe, I want to talk about what's happened since. Have you laid charges uh, against Eli Rabashkin, the person who has fled New Zealand now for Australia um, and is proudly proclaiming that they juiced you? Uh, look, oh, can we clear that up? Tomato sauce, tomato soup, or tomato juice? Um, for the purposes of my own hilarious art, I'm going to say tomato soup. Okay, you got Whether soup. Whether it's true or not, there's a, is another issue. And Just imagine actually... I work for News Hub. <laughs> you know, tell I can me... say what I like. Yeah. Just imagine I work for them. <laughs> I'll make it up. Okay, someone actually up. came up with the good line, they were soup Nazis, which was referenced to Seinfeld, <laughs> which I did actually find funny. Hey, um... Uh, Kelly J, so have you laid charges for the assault on you? I haven't. But I hear that he's... I, I, I read some stuff online about him boasting about um, committing a crime in Australia. No, he, some... he's, he's fled the country. The police couldn't... The police didn't even go and talk to him. But, uh, okay, can I just say he's going to get away with it if you don't lay charges? Okay, I'll lay charges. All right. Good on you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to incite... A legal process um, by doing that. Um, <coughs> I've got some calls here, um, and I am going to say uh, women first on these calls rather than men. Uh, keep them short, and if you're abusive, you are gone um, uh, on this. Um, but listen in, uh, Kelly. Susie, welcome to the platform. Kelly Jay's here. Hello. Hello, Kelly Jay. Hello, Sean. Look, I just want to say very quickly that there's a silver lining, <coughs> excuse me, in every cloud. And as much as we're so ashamed of what happened in New Zealand and probably throughout the world, um, what you have done is you've opened many of our eyes. And I'm 66, had never heard of you. And I'm so proud of the women in New Zealand who are standing up for you. So good luck and we'll be following you. Thanks, Susie. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Anna, Anna, welcome to the platform. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say um, I was so looking forward to hearing Kelly J speak. 
and um, I was so disappointed. I was up on the pla- on the rotund when um, the hordes surged up, and I was trying to brace the screen behind um, Kelly J where they were trying to crush her with it. And then when we went down off the rotund and tried to get her out through the crowd, um, there was gutter, and Kelly J, you felt, your foot got stuck in the gutter, and I picked you up from behind and got you back on your feet again. And I was so scared and so worried that you were going to fall and be basically killed. Wow. Thank you so much for for saving my life. I really do feel like uh, all those hands around me that day uh, genuinely uh, saved my life. And um, I'm really sorry that I didn't get to speak, but... I do. I do think we um, we shone a light for all women in New Zealand, uh, so that they can finally talk about what is happening to them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your for your call, uh, Anna. Uh, yeah, I think um, Kelly J. You got to realise what happened on Saturday was actually quite a watershed for New Zealand. It has had a massive cultural impact uh, on this country, and I see you smile there. And uh, you are not, uh, you are not the naive, innocent English housewife that you appear in my estimation. I think there is uh, not room upstairs to dance. There's a lot going on there. And tell me honestly, in some oh, yeah. way, in some ways, uh, and it has been a massive cultural watershed for New Zealand, was that your intent? Did you know that your style and everything was going to, if you like, lead to this massive overreach and exposure of the totalitarian extremes of the rainbow movement in New Zealand? I think I always know when I try and facilitate women to speak, I always know that men come out uh, or put these particular authoritarian uh, quasi-religious cultists come out rather uh, to stop them and I, I know that that's happening you know it's almost an open invitation in fact sometimes I I say to these people come on then why don't you come and why don't you come and stop us is exactly what I want come and stop come and try and shout and be aggressive and show everybody who you are and rather than them think hmm maybe this is something she wants they go yeah okay we'll show you but yes, I, I you know it's it's always about drawing the poison, drawing out the poison, and I think I've, I think we did that to mm. a level that I never quite imagined, just how poisonous it was. Yeah, I'd also like to just oh, look. We're going to take another call. The lines are filling, and, I, and um, we're actually going to take a call from a bloke, uh, Rex. Uh, oh, it is. It's 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 not a it's not a bloke. Rex, Rex, welcome. Oh, it's Rex. To- yeah. I know, and we know oh. Rex. Oh, okay, good. Oh, my name's morning, Sean. Thank G'day. you, Kelly. Day. My name's Rex Landy, and I'm a turf. I'm a big fucking turf. <laughs> now, okay. I am now. Oh, sorry, is, is that allowed? Sorry. Oh, I suppose it is. I suppose it is on the platform. Yeah. <laughs> Free speech. I am. I am a massive turf. Now, I've been trying for seven years to pierce this, and along comes Kelly J. Darling, you've ripped the scab off for the world to see how if you see T New Zealand really is. You know each other. How do you guys know each other? Oh, Kelly J was coming here to meet all the women of New Zealand, and a couple of years ago, Sean, I made a submission on the BDM double R tell lies on your birth certificate, so some man in the dress doesn't cry, Bill. Yeah. And um, it just surprised people, I suppose, because I just went gender dysphoria is a mental illness and you're changing our laws for people who cry and say, but if you dead name me and you're not dead, bro. And I told Deborah yeah. Russell off. Good on you, Rex. So, mm-hmm. I'm Kelly J. I can't tell you how sorry I am that you were put at risk mm-hmm. that our turf queen and, and we didn't get to meet, you didn't even get to Wellington. And mm-hmm. I want to say, Sean, um, I'm so Tania, sorry. And for you, darling, Tania, um, she hasn't told you she had her testimony, but Tania was doxxed on the way home and threatened and told you better find another flight, the arch, because we know. And Tania, my, my sister had to go, and, and Sarah, these wonderful boss turfs down here, 
just after we watched Free Speech die on the lawn of Albert Park, they got in their car and drove. And another woman drove Tania down to Rotorua to safety. And my sister and Sarah, God bless you, they picked him, her up because she couldn't come home safely. Because the loving and kind, be kind, and we just want a pee brigade. Sorry, I'm a bit manic, Sean. It's, it's That's all right. Really That's all right, Richie. I'm, upset. Let it go. I'm angry, bro. I'm angry. I'm really angry. And women are rising, you know, because, Kelly J, you have woken the world up. The world is watching. Good There's stuff. a little hug box. There's a little hug box in Wellington, in Auckland, mm. and our woman was set up by the police. Old bullshit castle yes. where Andrew Costa lives, that came from on high. Our complicit lamestream media, they need to be taken to court. How dare you, News Hub? You disgust yeah. me. Uh, Rex, we're going to pick up. We're right? going to pick up on that. I thank you so much for ringing in and for being you. Yeah. Good Never on you. Never surrender. Good Never on. surrender. Good on you. Look, Rex raises a really good piece. Love to you, point. Rex. Hey, Rex raises a really good point, Kelly J. Our media, from the moment of that. Nazi thing and the Green MPs calling for you to be banned. Our mainstream media, mm. and I'm now inclined to call them. I tweeted the other day, oh, were we allowed to call them the anti-woman mainstream media? Because that's what they'd do to you. That's what they did do to you. Mm. They painted you as anti-trans. Um, TV One, our state broadcaster, on Saturday night in covering the protest, deliberately dead named you four times, calling you Rosie Parker. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> Can you I believe think more that? scary, right? I think really scary is that they talked about uh, they sort of, people talk about clashes. It's not clashes if two thousand people try and kill a handful of people, try and rush and mob a handful of people. It is not a clash. It is a, an assault. It is a it is a bloody murder squad. It's not a clash. Um, it's absolutely shameful. I th I I hear that there's some. Some dodgy funding uh, weaving in and, and out of these nasty little threads of um, media, but I wouldn't be surprised because I, I think um, you know it, it's obviously high stakes because how much money would it take to sell your soul and to just make up lies? I, they didn't just extrapolate or exaggerate uh, or even omit stuff. They absolutely barefaced made up lies. It's disgusting. Everybody should think it's about time you just switched off those main new channel, news channels because it's it's poison. Were you dealt with fairly? Uh, I'm as amazed at the number of people. We, we got hold of you relatively quickly before you came here. Uh, I know you went on with him, Kim mm -hmm. Hill, on uh, national radio. Uh, were you treated yes. fairly in your inter interactions with mainstream media or legacy media in New Zealand? No, they're all corrupt. They're all they're all cult members, aren't they? And I mean, the the one guy at New Zealand Herald seemed okay, but he just didn't quite get it. Um, so that's fine. But I think he tried his best to be impartial. Uh, but as for the the tall, uh, pasty guy um, from News Hub, and then uh, News One or whatever it was, one I years. mean, I did. I I saw him in the crowd smiling smugly as he could see the violence that was about to be uh, rained down upon us. And he, he seemed quite pleased with himself. And I do shout and I just say, this is you. This is your lies. This is, this is I mean, I, I don't use quite those words. <laughs> I swear quite badly. I am in a, in a position where I can just see, you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm the chief executive. We've just had a meeting about swearing on this section of the show. I think it's all right, actually. And we won't go back and beep it all out. <laughs> hey, look, uh, do you mind taking some more calls? So many women want to talk no, to you. No, you carry on. Okay. Uh, yep. Lucy, Lucy, Kelly J's here. Good morning, Sean, and good morning, Kelly J. Um, I morning. just want to say that um, I've been following the story since you first came on the platform, Kelly J, and it's so funny because when I saw your face, I recognized you. I was like, where have I seen this lady from? And I saw you just on a passing video on Facebook and you were debating against this gender debate. Uh, it was quite a while ago. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's fantastic. And it all clicked and the penny dropped. And I just want to say that as a 25-year-old young woman in this world, you have just given myself and my mum, because we've been just... We can't stop talking about it. Um, so much strength 
and courage and just like the fire in our bellies and um yeah it's just it's just amazing and i think rex <laughs> hit the nail on the coffin um i was uh trying to message news uh nz herald uh and they actually blocked me from messaging them because i was calling out their misinformation and i've been reporting posts i've been emailing people i've turned into a, a damn right karen and um yeah, I, there's so many women here that do support you. And, um, yeah, that's just, it's just so sad. And thank you for shining light to the fucked up people in this country who, who wave a flag. And the flag, what does that represent? Does that represent the list of mental illnesses that they have? It's just stupid. And... I feel like you've given so many women in New Zealand courage to speak. And I just want to say thank you. And you're amazing. And just, just keep doing you, seriously. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased that you're so young as well because it's it's uh, you more uh, youthful ladies that are going to help change this. Uh, you need to now run for some sort of local or national government, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try. Hey, Lucy, uh, nice to hear from you Cheers. again. Take it easy. Regards to your mum. Um, all right, Rose. Rose, welcome to the platform. <laughs> you there, Rose? Are you off? Oh, no, we've already done, Rose, have we? Oh, OK. Well, we might take we might take a bloke. Steve, our mate from Whangaparoa. Steve. Hi, Sean. Hello, Kelly J. Hey, uh, yeah, Hi. Well, I, I listened to your uh, podcast with Brendan O'Neill, which was spectacular. Um, and and I just wanted to pick up on the one point that uh, you never lose and you didn't lose in New Zealand. You you won, and they've all lost because because of the groundswell that's coming behind you and uh, and the amount of people that that are seeing what you're doing. And I I, I just really hope that the police in Ireland and and your next stops. Um, Take the Canberra way instead of the bloody Auckland way. What a disgrace! Yeah, good yeah, on you. Canberra was um, yeah. Mm. Carry on. Thank you so much for saying that. As you can see, <laughs> Kelly J, our, our uh, Twitter is overflowing. And my, do you mind sticking around? How long you got? Because I mean, I mean, people really do want to connect with you. It's remarkable. I've probably got about. 20 minutes and I've got to go and redo my hair before I do the next TV Well, thing. Hey, you've also launched a, a political party. I think you're crazy and I think you're a nicer person than that, but you've, you've leapt into mm. politics. What's it called? Where's it going to stand? It's, What's it going to contest? It's called Party of Women and it really just is about going against uh, the GRA in the UK, but also about this this nonsense that politicians pretend they don't know what a woman is. So I'm going to go against the leader of the opposition. I mean, we're in a cost of living crisis. We've had a conservative government for quite a long time. It's pretty likely that the Labour government will, the next government will be a Labour government. And I want to make it absolutely impossible for them to get into power without um, peak transing the leader yeah. and for him to say that he knows what a woman is and he's going to protect women's rights yeah good on you hey um look i do have to ask this question it gets thrown up and all the troll geez i've been trolled hard um on twitter and mm. social media for the last three days since i mean since we had you on actually um but the question is asked who paid for you to come out here are you are you linked to dodgy shady groups um or not no no me yeah. Do I not look like I can afford a ticket? Um, I raise money through selling, like, so this T-shirt that I'm wearing. I do that. Example. I do the same. Um, I do the same. There. <laughs> so I, I have a very high turnover because I'm very good at what I do. Um, and uh, I sell enough T-shirts and I get to go to countries and help create space in which women can speak. I also get donations through standingforwomen.com, but the bulk of the spend, um, look, I do this because I want to spend my, I want to spend the money how I want to spend it. I want to do the best with it. I want to stretch every penny. I'm not asking permission from any, anyone. You give me over here in the UK, you give me 35 pounds 
I will uh, send you a T-shirt and I will do good with the profit and... Um, and it's perfectly autonomous. That sounds like a terrible Nazi conspiracy to me, Kelly Jake. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, we've got some more calls. Uh, Maurice, is it Maurice? Hello? Yes, hello. Hi, Sean. Hi, Kelly J. Um, I was there Hi. on Saturday. Hi. <laughs> and it was horrific. I, I left. Mm. I felt shocked for the re rest of the weekend. I can't even imagine how you were feeling watching that rabid mob unfold. Um, I've been aware of you for quite a while. I actually watched watched an interview on trigonometry. You were on, and I oh, was yes. like, who is this wonderful person? Because I've kind of been aware of the slippery slope of this whole trans movement, um, mm. and knew it was going to get bad. It's like, you know, unleashing this, you know, toxic cult mentality but yeah i just wanted to say thank you um it's just i really wanted to hear you speak you I went got out okay I then yes i had my dog with me i thought it was going to be my dog was terrified he's a doberman he was terrified um so i managed oh. to escape down the side but it, yeah <laughs> i just watched i watched men screaming at, i got screamed at by by men and it was hor horrific i like i said I felt so bad for you. I, I left, I walked up to see my husband because he was going to come, but he had to work. Um, he could see I was shaken. I just came home and sort of have been stunned since, ever since. But the good news is you have opened that can of worms for a lot of people who were unaware. Um, and, yeah, hopefully there is a movement, a strong movement against this. You know, especially from women who are unaware. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I've followed you for a few years now, and um, you've got way more supporters now. So mm. it's again, the silence apologies. that gets us, right? It's the silence. It. I think the yeah. silence um, about this issue, full stop, is that is the reason that it's been able to get so big and so ugly and so scary. Um, and yeah, now I, I do. I, I really do hope that's broken. Yeah, I think so too. I think for a lot of people, you just feel you know the cancel, the cancel culture, the screaming, the the oh, you must support the the rainbow cult. It's it's kind of gone beyond that now. To this, um, you know, you, you get terrorised and cancelled, but you're clearly above mm. that. And thank you. And uh, that is Maurice. Look, folks, we've only got Kelly for a, a short time more. Uh, Ladies' Day again. 0800 and ring in now because I'm trying to get through as many of you as I can. Caitlin, how are you, Caitlin? I'm good, thanks, Sean. Um, hi, Kelly. Hi, Sean. All right. Um, hi. I just, I just wanted to call. Um, I was on the rotunda. I'm the 11-week pregnant one. Um, and I don't think I actually realised until hearing your voice how how convinced I was at the time that you actually weren't going to make it out because it's been quite emotional actually hearing your voice. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But I wanted to say, I just wanted to say this week I've had three conversations with three separate people that I've never spoken to about this who are not, who are not into it, who are not overly aware and who through this event sort of very cautiously, you know, tiptoe around the corner of the issue of the, oh, did you see what happened on Saturday? And and and, it, and they clearly got the bravery to speak about it. And one woman had to take her daughter out of the state school and put her into a Christian school because of what they were teaching her. Um, and another woman who has mm. a cousin um, who transitioned and cut everyone off in her family and adopted her glitter family. So, um, and one woman also who... Um, made the comment, oh, I don't know why they let her into the country, honestly, such a Nazi, and, and having the opportunity to be like, well, actually, I was there, and and do you know what she stands for? And and so that's three ordinary women um, who were able to have three ordinary conversations um, thanks to this event. So, I mean, talk about a silver lining. Um, it's really, it's really galvanised people. Mm. I'm so, so yeah, pleased. I Can I just say, <laughs> um, 
I'm very concerned about the, the trauma and you uh, being pregnant. So if you get in touch with my people, um, if you just email me, uh, just go through the website and we will uh, pay for you and your family to go and have a quiet weekend somewhere and just get this out of your system and just get back to some sort of level of non-stress. Oh, thank you. That's um, that's really thoughtful. I, I got off lightly <laughs> compared to a lot of the women there. So, but thank you. Well, I thank you, Caitlin. You know. Yeah. Um, Caitlin, Love to you. Yeah, and Caitlin, can I tell you, your call into the show on Monday had a massive impact on people and uh, was uh, uh, really, really touched a lot of people, Caitlin. So I uh, don't think um, that you haven't gone unnoticed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. You see, uh, Kelly J, I said you had an impact. You changed people's lives. Uh, you've got to understand on a personal level just how much you did. Uh, Jane, welcome to the platform. Morning, Sean. Morning, Kelly J. Um, just the same as everybody else, really. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Um, I was there on Saturday, and I, I, I couldn't get to the bandstand. I wanted to stand with you, stand, stand beside you. Um, the crowd was just too thick by the time it started to get so unpredictable, so I'm sorry. But thank you for standing there as you did. Um, I work in mental health, um, and, I, and I work really closely with the police. The one thing in the office this week has been a collective sigh of relief. We can all start to have this conversation openly now. Um, so thank you. Mm -hmm. People have been, you, you, you're more than aware, people have been struggling with their internal dialogue that they, they're too frightened to talk about openly, but it, you, you've opened the floodgates. Thank you for pressing charges yeah. as well. I, I don't know if you don't, if, you, if you're aware. In New Zealand, if you don't, no one else can do it on your behalf. So this will just, if you don't press charge, it gets swept under the carpet. I know that there have been a um, okay. huge volume of complaints to the Independent Police Commission for Saturday to be examined um, as well. Um, appalling behaviour by, by this government, by the politicised police here, but we all know what's behind that. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm glad you, yeah. you're okay. I'm so disappointed not to just hear, hear people speak, um, uh, you know, that, that, that you, you, you've given us momentum. They've released some bullshit political story over the last day or so here to de detract from all of this, but momentum's here and it's going to keep going, so thank you. You're very welcome. Look, I mean, I, I honestly think the trade-off is is worth it. The, uh, the not hearing those women's voices actually means that we can hear the whole nation's voices on this particular issue, so... Um, I think it's, I hope those women feel it's a sacrifice worth making. Yeah. How are we going for time, Kelly J? I can, I can give you five, I can give you five. Five more minutes, five. okay. Uh, and yeah. thank you for this. Um, I, I wasn't quite aware of how many people just want to reach out to you. Uh, Wendy, Kelly J's here. Well, I'm kind of a big deal, Sean. <laughs> 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 and humble with it, that's what I like about you. <laughs> I am joking. <laughs> Wendy, you there? Hello, I'm here. All right, Kelly J's there. Have a chat. Hello, Kelly J. Thank you so Hi, much Wendy. for being here. I was there on Saturday and I was so frightened for you. It's still really big what we saw mm -hmm. you go through, what we went through. It was so frightening. I've never been so frightened in all my life. And we thought they were going to kill you. We really did. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your bravery. And to the other women that were there and that were assaulted, my God, I'm, I never thought I would see anything like that in my life. No. Thank, thank, <laughs> thanks, no, Wendy. Scary. Rose. Good day, Rose. You there, Rose? Rose, you're having a cup of tea. We'll come back to you. Uh, Kelly J, I want to ask you, look, obviously it was a traumatic experience, what happened. Um, and I know you might tell me to piss off. Would you mind coming back? Could we jack up getting you back here? There are a whole lot yeah, of people who would love, who would oh, love what, to, to see country? you. to country? Yeah, to New Zealand. You mean to your show? No, to New Zealand. Oh, I, I think a lot of New Zealanders would love to have you back. Well, I think um, the Prime Minister should invite me back, to be quite honest. 
as an apology. Um, that's what I think uh, we should we should go for. Mm. I think I think this should be an embarrassment. I think this should be a career ending embarrassment. Not because it's not because it's me, but just because I came to your country to talk about to give women in your country a space to talk about what is happening to them while they're being gaslit by the state and what the state have done in response is up the ante on how much they're willing to gaslight like these women. It's absolutely disgusting and it should be a career ending moment for any prime minister to govern and lie about what exactly was going on in that you space. You know the we had MPs <laughs> and ministers at that protest and the prime minister himself, Chris Hipkins, has said he was busy that day but he would have gone along to the counter protest. Well, I suppose if you do get your head stuck up your ass, it makes you quite busy for a day, doesn't it? Yeah, I asked him what a too. Silly man. I asked him too if he would at least express a desire for all the people who perpetrated violence and assaulted women that day. And I asked him directly in a media conference <laughs> if he wanted. Said, "Oh, that's a matter for the commissioner of police. He wouldn't want to get involved." Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want a prime minister of a country to say that he hopes people who commit a crime would actually be be punished with uh, the full force of the law. You wouldn't want him to say that, would you? Yeah. What is going on? Like, where, how deep is this? How deep is this deep state? Like, how deep is it? It's just, it's crazy level of... Yeah. Um, uh, look, I don't think it is. Nice. I'll tell you what, personally, I don't think it is deep state. I don't state. really think it's deep state. I don't it's think just, it's deep state. It's just the joking. emperor has no clothes, but our bureaucracy and our media and our academics... We're all believing the wonderful rainbow coat that political correctness wears. I don't know, though. Yeah, he knows that women got assaulted. That I mean, whether even if whether you think that men have pen, women have penises or not. Yeah. Or whether you think that these people are the brave, bravest, most persecuted, whatever people on earth. In that moment, in that day, some people did really, really, really bad things to women, and he doesn't care. That's not just being sucked into a cult. That is that is lying, uh, and that is uh, misdirecting and gaslighting a population. That's not just that's not just pretending that you think men can be women. It's so much worse than that. All right. Look, I invited Chanel Lal, who you may be aware of. I invited him on to talk to you today. <laughs> radio silence. Mm. Apart from his trolls mm. having a crack at me, and I'm sure having a crack at you. What would you say to Chanel Lal if he'd had the guts to front up today about what happened on Saturday in Albert Park? Oh, gosh. Um, mm, not to feed the narcissism. Oh, it'd be quite tricky, wouldn't it? I, I would probably just ask what what he wanted. You know, did he get what he wanted? Oh, I think he, he got more. He I think he got more, I th <laughs> more than I he think bargained he's for. Well, there's an expression over here. I think he's the dog that caught the car. <coughs> That's what I think. And what that means is your little yappy dog that barks at a car as it drives by and then it catches the car, right? Yeah. And then it's got to deal with the car. And, and I, I, I think... I'm going to paraphrase um, I you. It, I'm not a mechanic, but I know what a car is. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I said, I said quite some time ago, after the rainbows, we will be bringing a storm. Yeah. And that's exactly what we've done. And now there is, there is no going back to the day when everybody thought these rainbows were just a, a bunch of lovely, peace-loving, uh, be-kind uh, brigade. We, we now know they're not. They're an authoritarian, quasi-religious cult. All right. Look, can you take one more call and then I'll say goodbye? Yeah. I've just got Sheena, yes. you've been waiting. Sheena, Kelly J's here. Good morning. Hi. How are you, Kelly? Um, just I'm just good. How are you? Good. I'm good, darling, I'm good. And um, you can tell from the accent, it's one English lady to another. Hey, um... It no, is. Thank you so much. It is, darling. And um, thank you, thank you so much for your bravery. There was um, so many um, amazing ladies down there as well that really wanted to see you. Mm. Um, just to let you know that you've got a lot of love down here in New Zealand. You've got a lot of followers. There are some amazing people down here. And... Um, just thank you. Um, you know, there's a lot, as I say, there's a lot of brave women like yourself down here. Um, and I'm so glad that you have got um, a stage to talk from. And uh, keep doing the great work, girl, because you are just a fabulous thing that's been sent to us. 
Oh, thank you so much. All right. Hey, look. Okay, before we go, first, uh, first, very quick question. Did you hear my poem? Did you like it? Should I keep writing poetry? Uh, you keep, haven't seen me? Keep writing, me? Uh, but, but, but carry on with your um, platform. <laughs> okay, that's probably a C- <laughs> minus for my... <laughs> that own. was lovely. Thank you so very much. It was, br- it was brilliant. Okay. Uh, very funny. Yeah, I have to say that now because I've put you on the spot. Okay, so no plans to come back to New Zealand. You will lay charges. Not for some time. Yeah, you will lay charges yes. over the assault. Thank Somebody you. Somebody tells me how to do it. I'll do it. Okay, I'll busy, get busy, uh, busy. someone. I've got lawyer people. I know will get in touch with you and, and do that. Good. Um, you've got the political campaign going, and you know we talked. What did the Rainbow Community get out of this? Could you give me a quantitative like percentage increase in your following and? and uh, awareness of you literally around the world as a result uh, of the rainbow unicorn moment in Albert Park mm. on Saturday. What's it done, what's it meant for you and your message? Well, you know, I've had a few viral moments um, in my career, um, but this this really has been massive. And plus I'm, I'm back on Twitter, so I, I sort of went from about 40,000 to, 40, to 85,000 followers uh in just the last few days um interviews people interested in me that have uh, avoided me for quite some time probably know who i am but uh just now i'm 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 very difficult to ignore uh but you know it's all about it really is about letting women speak and it's Mm. about my whole purpose um is to create spaces and speak in a way that women feel that they can speak to and so I speak to women so they can speak for themselves. And I think uh, that's what we're doing. And these women are angry. And I think uh, those men came to intimidate those women and all of us. Uh, Men and women, let's not be unfair. But the the mob came to intimidate the people that had just come to listen to people speak. And I think it's going to be the biggest mistake the mob had made because now uh, there is no more hiding everyone can see just exactly what uh, that group is made up of. Kelly J, thank you for your time this morning. Um, we got there in the end. Um, don't be a stranger. I did. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That's all right. And we're sorry. We're sorry for the bottom of our hearts for how our country treated you. And many New Zealanders will say to you, um, you are welcome back any time and we won't Mm -hmm. be so ungrateful, uncouth and uncivilised again. Thank you. Well, let's... uh, I'll come back to your show in about a month, Sean, and we'll see how people feel then and whether the changes are setting in. Good on you. Take care. Talk soon. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye. That is uh, Kelly J. Keen, Mitchell, Posey Parker... um, And, boy, she gave us a lot of her time. She gave us 45 minutes of her time. Thank you. Uh, She gave us more respect than our country collectively gave her.